All right, folks, so we're going to talk today about the first stages of the CMA process. We're going to talk about how to set up a subject property in a couple of different ways. We're going to talk about how to associate that property with a specific client. And then in a subsequent video, we'll talk about all of the other parts of the CMA, like adjustments and how to get the actual finished product out of the CMA. But I just want to go through the first couple of stages here so you can understand how to organize your CMAs in your system here. And this is, of course, in the Paragon system. So, so we're going to be using this CMA tab here. And I'm going to go ahead and cre uh, click that. We're going to create a presentation here. Of course, once you've created it, you're going to save it. And they all are saved in the saved presentations here. But we're going to go ahead and just create a presentation. And you'll see when we open that up, there is a wizard that's going to open up. It says here, right here, the CMA wizard. And there are a few different ways to go through the CMA wizard. The first is down the left here, you'll have these folders that expand and contract and, and each step it has its own little um, subheading here. So we start with the very first one, which is to just simply name the presentation. You can also move through the presentation by, or the CMA wizard by using the skip and back button to move to subsequent steps or previous steps. And then as you're finishing each of the steps, there's usually a continue button that you're gonna be able to hit, which will take you to the next step in the process. So um, if at any time you're, you're caught though and you wanna jump back a few steps, you, it's probably easiest to use these folders on the left. And of course they all expand and contract as well so that you can um, quickly move to where you wanna go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to name the presentation. Um, I like to name them uh, based upon the address. You could use the client name, you could use client name and address, whatever you want. You just you should come up with some system that you think will keep you organized in there. Again, I think address is probably the best because if you did um, multiple CMAs, uh, you know, for one client, then you would have their different addresses in there, and you know which one it is. So. So once you've named it, again, that continue button is gonna just take you, you can see we've jumped down to the next step here, which is to create our subject property. So there are a couple of different ways that you can create a subject property, okay? So um, the first one is just absolutely from scratch, you've gone in and you've looked at the property, you've got all the data manually, uh, you took some photos of the property that you're coming back to add to your CMA, and they're on your camera right now, or on your computer, I should say, and, and you're just gonna go ahead and create a subject property based upon the information that you know about it. Each of these fields is one of the fields that corresponds to the listing cut and is going to be something that you can use to adjust should you want to within the CMA process later on. So fill out as much of this as you can. There's a bunch of uh, fields. If you scroll down, you'll see there are a bunch of fields here. And then, of course, there are a whole um, series of others as well that, uh, that you can fill out by expanding these. So features, for example, is one where you're going to fill out all the different features of the property. Um, some of them are, are not super relevant for you right now. I don't know that everyone's going to be using room sizes and things like that in their CMAs, but uh, you can quickly get to all of the, the features and the fields, I should say, uh, to, to be adjusting for. You can add in an image for the subject property that you have. So if you have that image on your computer, uh, you're going to just double click on where it says no image available. You're going to browse your computer and you'll find an image um, wherever you stored it. So if you put it on your desktop, you can uh, go ahead and grab it off your desktop if you want. If you put it somewhere else, you know, my photos and my documents, wherever it is, that's where you're going to find it on your computer. And then you just upload it here and then you'll have the photo of the property there. Okay, so that's creating a subject property from scratch. And once you've done it, I would say you always want to just save the listing. That way it's stored in there and you're, you're good to go. One quick little tip as well, that if you're filling out the fields and you click on required only, uh, this little R button up here, it only will show you the fields that are required for uh, listing the property. So you might, not, uh, you might not fill out all the ones that you would otherwise, but at the very least, um, it's going to quickly take you through some of those things there, some of those fields there, rather than having to go through all of them. But I would say for the first little while, you're going to want to leave on all of the fields so you can decide which ones you want to compare with next. The other way that you can actually go ahead and add a subject property is to use an existing MLS listing. So this property has been listed and sold before. And so all I need to do is I need to just go find the MLS number for this one. Um, and, and then I can enter that in here and it's going to pull in all that information from the previous listings that are there for this specific property so that I can use that information to go ahead and do the CMA. 
So I'll show you what I mean. So if I come back uh, and I just do a search for a residential property, and I just go find that property by its address. So I'm going to take out the statuses because I don't want those statuses because it's probably going to be a sold or expired or withdrawn property uh, that we're looking for, not something that's active. You're probably not doing as many CMAs on active properties. So I'm going to go ahead and search for that property here, and you'll see that when I search for it, there's a whole bunch of them there. There's nine. I'll pull up the I'll pull up all the uh, the results here, and and I'm going to choose to use this one, which is the most recent. Um, and all I need is this number here, five one seven five four six four for this one. So I'll come back here, type that in, and hit go. And you'll see that it automatically pulls in all the information about this property from the previous listing, including the, the main photo here. So you can use that as your um, subject property here. Now, like, like I say, instead of having created a brand new one, I've just pulled in all the information from the previous time that this one was listed. So again, if you have, um, you're doing a CMA and you want a quick little way to add a subject property, that's a great way to do it you'd go ahead and click save. And that's what I'm going to do in this case. I'm going to go ahead and click save. So you can see over here that it says the CMA has been saved successfully. Okay. So now I'm done. I can, I can get to that next step, which is to associate it with a client by one of these two ways. I can click on next and you'll see it takes it down to the next stage here, or I can go ahead and just have clicked over here and it'll do the same thing here. Now, associating with a client, a couple of things that I can choose to do as well. If I haven't got the client for this already, I can go ahead and I can just create the new client or I can select a client from my contact list. So if you have already had this client in your contact list, click on that one and you can go through and you can pick whichever one uh, is the most appropriate and you can go ahead and associate it with whoever it is. So I'm going to say that this is Mike Jones's. I can click on here and uh, as soon as I click on here and click OK, so if I highlight that and click OK, that's going to associate this CMA with Mike Jones. If, however, I don't have him in my contact list already, I want someone uh, in my contact that's not in my contact list already, I can go ahead and do this. So I'll go ahead and uh, attach this to Jay Vino. And again, I can add in any additional information that I want. As I'm creating this contact, I can, I can use this as a little bit of a, a tracking tool and maybe even a bit of a CRM tool um, just to say this is the client. But at the very least, I want to attach it with a couple of um, a couple, a first name and a last name here, maybe an email address or something like that. Okay. Once I've done that, I want to go ahead and I want to click save again. And now it's going to be associated with that, that client. Okay. And that's really it. Those are the steps that I wanted to take you through today. So, so, so far what we've done is we've created a presentation and we've named it, whatever the address of the property was. We found a subject property through the existing MLS, or we've talked about how you could create one yourself. And then we've associated it with a specific client. And you'll see why that's important later on. Okay. So next video will be how to use this tool to go ahead and find comparables and make adjustments.